Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have joined airlocks with a spaceship in which two criminals are holding Carol captive. Although the outlaws have meekly surrendered over the space phone Buzz is still wary. I'm going to open the inner hatch, Happy. Have your ray gun ready. Yes, sir. You got us, Commander. Put our hands up. Keep them that way. You can put those guns away because you can't see. Happy, the lights. They're blinding, Commander. I'll let them have a trembo. They can't see. They're helpless. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol adventure, The Cosmic Ray Detector. (laughs) Gang, it's terrific. It's sensational. It's new, different, thrilling. It'll pop your eyes wide open in amazement. It'll have you whistling like you never whistled before. It'll have you yelling with excitement because, gang, this is it. The swellest regulation Space Patrol equipment you ever had the chance to own. I'm speaking of the Space Patrol Pocket Projectoscope. What does it look like? What does it do? How can you get it? Well, gang, I have the answers. It's a model of Buzz Corey rocket ship Terra 5. It's six inches long. It has four big tail fins. It has a one-inch radar antenna. It's made of beautiful blue and yellow plastic. What does it do? It blinks on and off rapidly. Flash, flash, flash like a real signal light. It throws a steady beam of light like a real flashlight. It shows pictures on the wall like a real film projector, complete with bulb and battery, complete with film containing four Space Patrol adventures. Now you put this film in your projector scope, you darken the room, push the radar antenna, and there on the wall you get a picture. To show a whole adventure, slide the film from picture to picture. Loads and loads of fun, and nothing, nothing like it ever before. Gang, to get a projector scope, do this. Buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 86, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Cosmic Ray Detector. In Commander Corey's central office at Space Patrol headquarters on Terra... Cadet Happy is checking through a file of search mission reports from the Venus Command as the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, enters. Hi, Happy. Oh, hello, Carol. Hey, that's some outfit. You like it? Dad got it for me especially for this trip to Jupiter. Hey, it looks great. Uh, What time does your ship leave? In about an hour. I'm going on the SS Space Queen. Hmm, traveling in style, eh? Well, I wanted to fly my own ship. But Dad talked me into taking the passenger transport. Mm. Is uh, the commander around? Oh, he stepped out about a half hour ago. I, I don't know when he'll be back. Oh, gosh, I hope he didn't forget. Say, that reminds me. He said this folder was for you. Oh, good. It's the data for my talks at Jupiter University. What are you going to talk about? Opportunities for youth in interplanetary government service. Well, that shouldn't give you any trouble. Well, I imagine the commander's notes in the space patrol will be a big help. Well, I'd better get over to the spaceport and see what's happened to my luggage. Okay, Carol. Good luck. Thanks, Happy. Oh, and thank the commander for these notes. Oh, sure. How are you doing, Happy? I'm nearly finished filing the reports, Commander. Oh, uh, Carol was just here. She got the notes all right. Good. You can finish that job later, Happy. We've got to get over to the spaceport. Is something wrong, sir? Yes, Happy, there is. One of our agents was on his way to the security lab with some of those new cosmic ray detector units. He was waylaid and slugged. The thief got six of the units and a copy of the formula. Smoking rocket. Our agent got a brief glimpse of the man who slugged him. He's not positive, but he thinks the thief might be Dolph Rambo. Dolph Rambo. Mm. Now, where have I heard that name before? Rambo's been questioned a couple of times in the past in regard to some gem swindles. We couldn't make anything stick. Mm. So now he's branching out into cosmic ray detectors, huh? It is Rambo who did it. I think he'll try to get the detector units off Terra as quickly as possible. 
I have an extra detail at the spaceport now. Let's get down there and look around. Oh, excuse me. Uh, could you tell me where the interplanetary transport ticket office is? Yes, I'm headed that way myself. Follow me. Why, thank you. Got the detectors, Hensley? Yes. In a jewel case right here in my pocket. No one's watching. Hand it to me. Better be careful, Rambo. The terminal is swarming with space patrol men. So what? Didn't you fix the detectors into a necklace the way you planned? Yes, and it's a beauty. It would take an expert to tell the real gems from the ray detector crystals. What about the formula? It's hidden under a false bottom of the jewel case. Uh, then slip it to me. In ten minutes, I can be aboard the Space Queen. I think these Space Patrol agents are looking for somebody. If they get suspicious, they'll hold the gems for a careful examination. But they wouldn't hold me, Hensley. I've got those identification papers you fixed for me, showing that I'm a representative for Jupiter Gem Importers. It's too big a risk, Rambo. I wouldn't be surprised if everyone who was getting on the ship was thoroughly searched. Well, what are we going to do, stay here on Terra? Ah, that's risky, too. Hey, look over there. Hmm? Isn't that Carol Carlyle, the Secretary General's daughter? Where? Over there, checking her luggage. Yes, it is. Looks like she'll be aboard the Space Queen, too. Well, now, I doubt very much if her luggage would be searched. Now, what do you mean? Just this. You go on ahead. I'll wait here. And as soon as I can, I'll slip the jewel case into one of her suitcases. And after the ship gets to Jupiter, you can steal it back from her. Yeah, that's a great idea, Hensley. All right. But watch your step. Go on now. Get aboard. I'll take another ship to Jupiter and join you there. Commander, isn't that Carol over there by gate 12? Yes. Let's go over and say goodbye to her. It'll explain our presence here in case the thief is watching us. It's about 15 minutes until the Space Queen blasts off. Mm -hmm. While we're talking to Carol, we can get a line on the other passengers. Uh-oh. Come this way, Happy. Hmm? Just saw somebody I'd like to talk to, that fellow with the briefcase. Who is he, sir? Rambo. Get on the other side of him in case he tries to make a break. Leaving Terra, Rambo? Hmm? Oh, Commander Corey. Uh, yes, Commander, I'm going to Jupiter for the firm. The firm? Uh, Jupiter Gem Importers. I've been with them for nearly a year now. I see. I wonder if you'd mind coming with me to the guard office. Why, is something wrong? I'd like to ask you a few questions. It'd be less embarrassing in private. Oh, naturally, I have no objections, but the Space Queen is due to blast off in a few minutes. The ship will be held here until we've finished our checkup. If everything's all right, you'll be aboard, Rambo. Oh, very well, Commander. I'll come with you. Would you mind if we examined your luggage? <laughs> Certainly not. But, uh, may I ask what you're looking for? If you have it, you know what I'm looking for. If you don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Satisfied, Commander? Oh, not quite, Rambo. What did you find out, Happy? All the luggage has been checked, sir. Nothing. How about Rambo's? His is okay, too. All right, Rambo, you can go now. Thank you, Commander. I must say your men have been very thorough. That's their job. The Space Queen will be blasting off in a few minutes. Yes. I uh, hope you find what you're after. <laughs> Whatever that may be. Well, sir, it looks as though we drew a blank on Rambo this time. Happy, you and I are going to blast off for Jupiter and Terra 5 and see what we can find out about Rambo and his honest business venture. Dolph Rambo and Jupiter calling Burton Henchley aboard private space cruiser J-437. Rambo calling Burton Henchley. Henchley here. Go ahead. Henchley, something's gone wrong. What do you mean? Where are you? At the Hotel Juno in Jupiter City. Did you get the ray detector? No, they weren't in Carol's suitcase. I checked right after the luggage was taken off the Space Queen. But they got to be. Are you sure you picked the right one? Yes, but they weren't there. The jewel case was gone. Now listen, don't get panicky. The girl probably has it. Where is she staying? The Olympia Hotel. Well, I'll be landing at Jupiter City in a few minutes. Just sit tight till I get there. We'll search her room. Suppose she's in it. Figure some way to get her out for a while. A fake phone call out to do the trick. Yeah, but what'll I tell her? Well, that's your problem. After all, it should be simple for an experienced con man like you. 
All right, Angeli. I'll think of something. Take over the controls? Oh, no, thanks. Space control has cleared us for landing. I'll bring her in. I just wanted to tell you that our suspicions of Rambo are well founded. Oh? You mean he's the one that slugged our agent and took the ray detector? He might be. At any rate, this gem importing firm he works for has a dubious reputation. Space control just relayed some information on it. Jupiter Gem Importers is run by a man named Burton Henschley. Henchley blasted off from Terra right after the Space Queen. Did they find anything aboard his ship, sir? No. no Henchley was clean. Very likely he was the one who was talking to Rambo at the spaceport. Well, I, I wonder why Rambo didn't go with Henchley. If they're both going to Jupiter, it would have saved a fare in the Space Queen. Well, maybe business is so good they don't have to worry about credits. Well, it could be that Rambo intends to pick out a future victim among the passengers. After we land in Jupiter City, we'll pay Carol a visit and then check up on our gem experts. This is Carol's room, Henchley, 1209. Is anybody looking, Rambo? All clear. Ah, it's locked. We'll have to use the magna key. In here, quickly. Now, let's get to work. Let's see, we got about 20 minutes before she realized that <laughs> there is no Professor Blackwell who's going to meet her in the Juno Hotel coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good gimmick, wasn't it? When I found out Carol was here to talk at the university, I thought she'd probably fall for something like that. Yes, yes, very clever. Now, let's see if you're clever enough to find a jewel case. Yeah. And that suitcase there on the rack, that's the one it's supposed to be in, isn't it? Yes, but it's been partly unpacked. See, like I told you, it isn't here. She must have found it on the ship. Uh-uh. Look. Here on the dressing table. Is that it? Oh, it's the case, but the necklace is gone. She's either wearing it or she had it locked up in a hotel wall. Now what are we going to do? Well, we'll have to wait till she gets back. Hey, but suppose she's turned the jewels uh, over to the space let's patrol. Let's see now. See if the formula is still in the case. Uh, yeah, it's still here. Well, my guess is she's wearing the necklace. After all, she'd never suspect that some of the gems are really ray detector crystals. Wait, what's this? A space agreement. Look, she started to send a message and was interrupted. To Secretary General Carlisle Terra. It's to her father. Dear Dad, what a wonderful surprise. I found a necklace when I opened the suitcase on the ship. You really shouldn't have. That's all the farther she got. Oh, well, my phone call as Professor Blackwell interrupted her. Oh, that's a break. Supposing she'd send this spacogram. Yeah. I'll just take this message. Listen, someone's at the door. It's probably Carol. Uh, we won't get rough unless we have to, but we're going to get her out of here. Here we are, sir. 12.09. We won't stay very long, Happy. Carol's probably anxious to prepare a speech for the university. Yeah, and I'm anxious to find out what Rambo and Hinchley are up to. Carol, it's Cousin Happy. Well, didn't the clerk tell you that Carol just got back, sir? Yes. Well, she's here, all right. The door's ajar. Well, maybe she's in another part of the suite unpacking. I don't think she'd mind if we went in. Carol, are you here? Oh. Hey, what's been going on in here? Chairs are upset and the things on the dressing table are smashed. Let's look around. Carol? Carol? Well, she's not in here. Oh, gee, sir, what do you suppose happened? Carol's been taken away. By the looks of this room, she wasn't very willing to go. Happy notify Jupiter City Space Patrol. I'll start questioning the hotel staff. <laughs> We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, how's your morning takeoff? Are you blasting off with your jets really roaring? Are you riding your bike like Buzz Corey rides his rocket? I mean with your speedometers smoking like a volcano on Venus. In other words, Space Patrollers, are you supercharged in the morning? Well, here's the way the Commander Corey gets supercharged. 
he tucks away a power breakfast with Rice Chex or Wheat Chex, the super cereals. Try Rice Chex today. What'll you say? Delicious. And try Wheat Chex today. So swell tasting, you'll eat more and more and more and more. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex, the only cereals in the universe with that modern bite-sized design for easy eating. The only cereals in the universe with a picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside of the package, and the only cereals in the universe with that mysterious magic space picture on the inside of the package. The super cereals that help to supercharge you. Rock checks, wheat checks. So gang, one, two, three. Get ready to blast off to your grocer's forum right after today's Space Patrol adventure. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, the Cosmic Ray Detector. Buzz and Happy are investigating the mysterious disappearance of the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, from her hotel room in Jupiter City. Knowing that Carol's luggage would not be thoroughly searched for the stolen cosmic ray detector crystals, the two thieves, Burton Henchley and Dolph Rambo, had put the crystals in one of Carol's suitcases. They intended to retrieve them before the luggage could be removed from the Jupiter City spaceport to the hotel. But their plan misfired when Carol accidentally discovered the crystals, which the thieves had disguised by working them into an expensive-looking necklace. While Happy examined Carol's hotel room for clues, Commander Corey has finished interrogating the hotel staff. Find anything, Happy? Mm, no, sir. Maybe one of the lab experts could make something out of these smudged fingerprints. I can't. Two technicians are on the way over now. I finally located a maid that's pretty sure she saw Carol. She was with two men. They were going down the rear stairs. Did she say Carol was struggling? According to the maid, she didn't appear to be. Of course, they could have held a ray gun on her. The maid thought it was strange they didn't to the elevator. Mm. Now, here's one thing I found. It may not mean much, sir, but... Well, it was in the wastebasket. Here it is. It was all wadded up. A spacegram. Carol's father. She must have decided to rewrite it. It isn't finished. Dearest Dad, I opened my suitcase on the ship to get a book to read, and there was this beautiful necklace. I was so surprised. Necklace. That could be a motive, all right. Someone in the ship may have seen it. Rambo. Possibly. Rambo doesn't go in for strong-arm methods. Besides, taking the necklace would be one thing, but forcing Carol to go with him, well, that's something else. Well, maybe she didn't have the necklace with her, and the crook was making her take him to where it was. But where else would it be? Carol just arrived here. It would be here in a room or a hotel vault. I'll check with the manager. Hmm. That phone call, I wonder. Phone call? The desk clerk said a Professor Blackwell of the university called Carol shortly after she checked in. She told the clerk she'd be back in an hour, but came back much earlier. Happy, let's get over to headquarters. Yes, sir. We'll check with the university on Professor Blackwell, and then I'll space upon the Secretary General for a description of that necklace. Rambo, I'll let you out here. Go to the spaceport and get clearance for our ship to blast off. What about Carol? I'll take care of her. Take her to the lab till I hear from you. You're going to leave her there till somebody finds her? No, we'll get her aboard the ship. Once we get her out in space, nobody will find her. And if they do, she won't be able to tell them anything. All right, Rambo. Get out and hurry to the spaceport. Are you sure you can handle her? And drive, too. Yeah, if she gives me any trouble, the paralyzer ray will quit her down. Now get going. All right, Hensley. I'll call you at the lab. only a few blocks to the jewelry lab, Carol, so don't make it difficult for yourself. Well, I don't understand why you're forcing me to come with you. You could have tied me up in the hotel room and gotten away with the necklace. Of course. And within an hour, you'd have the space patrol looking for us. All right. Well, take your hands off that wheel. Stop that. You idiot. You... And now, see what you've done, you... Uh, come back here. Get back in this car. Thanks for the ride. Come back here. Come back. I just checked with the university, sir. There's no Professor Blackwell on the staff, and nobody there knew that Carol had arrived on Jupiter. Then that call was designed to get Carol out of a room while they searched for the necklace. I've talked to the Secretary General. He didn't give Carol that necklace. Well, then who did? I don't think it was ever intended that Carol find it. It was smuggled into a suitcase back on Terra. 
By by Rambo? Or his partner. They figured that Carol's luggage wouldn't be searched. Yeah, but it was searched, sir. It was a clever trick. You simply wanted to get the jewelry through. Mm, certainly. No one would suspect the Secretary General's daughter of having jewelry that wasn't hers. Well, here's the important point, Happy. Rambo is supposedly a messenger for a legitimate gem importer. Why couldn't he openly carry jewelry? Hey, that's right, sir. Unless something else was being passed off as jewelry. The ray detector crystals. Right. And perhaps the stolen formula. I'll get it, Hap. Maybe for Captain Raymond. He's using Major Young's office temporarily. Commander Corey here. Commander, this is Carol. Carol, where are you? I'm in the Jupiter Arcade building at Public Communications Booth 27. Are you all right? Yes. I managed to get away from Rambo and Hitchley. They're planning to blast off from Jupiter and Hitchley's private cruiser. Are they at the spaceport now? Rambo is. Hitchley's somewhere near. I managed to cause an accident with his surface car. All right, Carol. You stay right there in the arcade building. Happy and I'll be right over to pick you up. Come on, Happy. Let's get going. Expecting someone, miss? Hinchley. Don't spread any alarm, Miss Carol. I've got something here that's more painful than a paralyzer ray. Now quietly to my car. <laughs> Rambo should have my ship ready by now. I've looked all over the arcade, Commander. She's not here. Did you check the communication booth? Yes, sir, and the cafe. I told her to stay right here. Maybe she saw Hinchley or Rambo. That's what has me worried. Oh, but they wouldn't try anything here in this crowd. If they suspect that Carol called me, they're desperate enough to try anything. Get into our surface car, Happy. We're going to the spaceport. You see, Miss Carroll, that break for freedom didn't do you a bit of good. Yes. We're hundreds of DUs out of Jupiter now. Where are you taking me? Well, your part of the trip is just about over. We have to get rid of you. It's regrettable. Hensley, look at the rear view scope. Huh? Looks like something's coming after us. Spaceship. Increase the sensitivity. Let's see if we can identify it. It's a space patrol battle cruiser. Commander Corey. Now, I am glad I brought you along. Corey, one dare fire on us now. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Hensley and Rambo aboard private cruiser J-437. Commander Corey to Hensley and Rambo. What are we going to do? That's Corey's problem. Let him worry about it. Corey to Hensley and Rambo. I'm right behind you. Stand by to be boarded. Here, I'll talk to him. Uh, Hensley to Corey. Let me give you some advice. Turn around and go back and keep the rest of your space patrol away from us. We got Carol Carlyle all aboard. I'm giving you a chance to surrender, Hensley. Better play it smart. Corey, if you come any closer, we're going to push Miss Carlyle out into space without a spacesuit. I thought that would cool you off. Rambo, stop her. She's running back up. Hey, you, come back here. Rambo, grab her quickly. I'm warning you. I mean business. Now, come out of that compartment. Open up, you little fool. Open up or I'll break the door down. Go ahead. Rambo, did you catch her? She locked herself in the compartment. What are we going to do now? The only thing you can do is give up. You can't harm Carol now. Well, what's your answer? Uh, all right, Corey. You win. We'll cut our velocity and stand by to be boarded. I'm coming up to join airlocks. Uh, check. Hensley out. You'd cut off the space phone, Corey. had never known we couldn't carry out our threat. We're not true yet, but I want Corey to think so. Yeah, but what can we do now? Listen, get a couple of high-powered atomo lights. Rig them up so they're focused on the inner hedge. Atomo lights? Yeah. Stand in front of them. Then when Corey comes through the hedge, step aside. Before he can recover from the glare, we'll take care of him for sure. Join airlocks, Commander. Stand by with magnetic holding field. Standing by, sir. Airlock secured. Apply holding field. All right, Happy. Into the airlock. Yes, sir. Do you think they'll try anything, sir? We're going to be prepared just in case they do. Have your ray gun? Yes, sir. All right. Open the outer hatch. Now into their airlock. I'll go first. You got us, Commander, with our hands up. Yes, you can put those guns away. Because you can see. 
Happy, though. <laughs> My eyes. Uh, let them have a trembo. <clears throat> I got the cadet. Oh, yeah? Where are you, you coward? Uh, right here. I could just see where you were so I could get my hands on you. Where are you, Hap? Over here, sir. Then this must be Hensley. <laughs> Hang on, Happy. I'm coming. Thanks, sir, but I think this will do it. <sighs> nice going, Hap. Oh, for a while there, I thought they had us. That was close, all right. Buzz, Happy, are you all right? Yes, Carol, and you? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, Commander, here's the necklace. I found it in Hensley's pocket. Oh, good. Hang on to it. Yeah. Hey, but which ones are the ray detector crystals? We'll let the lab experts figure it out. Oh, Buzz, look at the time. How long will it take us to get back to Jupiter? I don't know exactly. Oh, about an hour. Why? Well, if we don't hurry, I'll be late for my lecture at the university. Oh, fine. She was pretty nearly thrown out in space, and now she's worried about the lecture. What's your subject for the lecture, Carol? Government service. A job with security. Security, she says. <laughs> <laughs> A preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hey, gang, imagine the fun of owning a model rocket that shows pictures on the wall. Imagine the fun of owning a rocket you can use as a signal light and also as a flashlight. Well, the new Space Patrol pocket projectoscope does all these things. Yes, sir, it's a film projector, signal light, and a flashlight all in one. Nothing like it on the face of the Earth before. It comes with a real strip of film for showing pictures on the wall. And, gang, wait till you see what those pictures are. Four complete Space Patrol adventures with Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy. Listen to these titles. Space Pirate, Men from Mars, Robot Invasion, Mighty Missile. Don't they sound terrific? You bet. And just think, gang, you can show these complete Space Patrol adventures on your wall. You just slip the film in your projectoscope, darken the room, push the radar antenna, and there on the wall you have it, a real picture. So, gang, don't wait not a single day. Send for this wonderful new Space Patrol pocket projectoscope just as soon as you can. Remember, it's a film projector, it's a signal light, it's a flashlight all in one. A six-inch blue and yellow plastic model of Buzz Corey's own rocket ship. And it comes to you complete with bulb, battery, and film. To get a projectoscope, buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks, the cereals that bring you the magic space picture. Then, with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good in the USA only and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in an underground passage deep beneath Saturn City, attempting to capture a plutonium thief, Victor Drumlin. Drumlin has burst the atmosphere pumps and is drawing deadly methane gas from Saturn's atmosphere into the lower levels. Protected by a shielded hideout, Drumlin refuses to surrender. That methane gas isn't going to stop us, Drumlin. We can break that door down before it reaches this level. That door is built to shield against an explosion, Corey. The kind you're going to hear in a moment. What does he mean, Commander? He's bluffing, Happy. Methane isn't explosive. It is when it's mixed with ordinary air and ignited. Listen. What's that, Commander? He's turned on the generators, Happy. If he overloads them, he'll ignite the gas and blow up Saturn City. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Secret of Sub-Level 7, when we check Rice Jacks and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! Special bulletin for boys and girls in Dayton, Ohio and Baltimore, Maryland. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket! Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Good Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Virginia Hewitt. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday, every Saturday, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol!